The given question is a GRE quantitative reasoning sample question. This question is of the format select one or more answers. Comes from the topic permutation combination. Quickly read the question. For which of the following events will the number of outcomes exceed 50? Indicate all such events. How many events do we have? We have a total of 6 events. The number of outcomes for any of these events is let's say an n. We need to find out how many of these events have the number of outcomes exceeding 50. So if it's greater than 50, 51, 52, 5 million, all of those are perfect answers to this. If the number of outcomes is less than 50 or if it is equal to 50, both of those cases will not get counted. Have they mentioned how many of these events have greater than 50? No, they have not. They said pick all such events. So you could start anything from one of these events having greater than 50 and the remaining five having lesser than 50 outcomes and can go all the way up to all six of these events could have a number of outcomes which is greater than 50. This question is a time consuming question. It's a difficult question. There's absolutely no shortcut to it. You just have to find out the number of outcomes for each one of these options and figure out whether it is greater than 50. Let's not waste time reading all six up front. Let's start with the first of the events. Let's dive deep into option A. The number of outcomes in which at least three heads appear, at least three head, notice this, right? When a coin is tossed six times or six consecutive tosses of a fair coin takes place. You toss a coin once, you have two outcomes. Toss it a second time, you have another two outcomes. So you'll have two times two outcomes when it is tossed twice. So when you toss it six times, we know the total number of outcomes is equal to two power six. But that's not what the question is. This question is asking of these two power six outcomes, in how many outcomes will you have at least three heads? If we toss a coin six times, we could get anything all the way down from zero heads. All of the outcomes could have been tails, all the way up to all of them being heads, which is all six tosses turned out to be heads. What we need to count are the outcomes in which we get at least three heads. What do we mean by at least? At least is minimum. A minimum of three heads in six tosses. So if you get 3 or 4 or 5 or 6, all of those are okay. So what we are going to do is we are going to count the number of outcomes in which we get 3, number of outcomes in which we get 4, 5 and 6 and then we will add all of those outcomes because we are concatenating it with an OR. You concatenate it with an OR, you usually add. You concatenate it with an AND, you multiply. Keep this as a mnemonic in any permutation question. Number of outcomes in which we will get 3 heads. 6 tosses, 3 heads that will appear in 6 C3 outcomes, 6 choose 3 outcomes. What is the value of 6 choose 3? Just 6 times, 5 times, 4 upon 1 times, 2 times, 3. The denominator is a 6, gets cancelled with a 6 in the numerator to leave us with 20 outcomes. So 3 heads out of 6 tosses will appear in 20 outcomes. For 4 heads, the answer is 6 choose 4. You probably have learned this, NCR is equal to n c n minus r. So 6 c 4 is the same as 6 c 2. 6 c 2 is easy to calculate. 6 c 2 is 6 times 5 upon 1 times 2. 30 upon 2 that is equal to 15. Quickly running through this, there is going to be 6 c 5 for 5 heads which is the same as 6 c 1 applying this logic. So 6 c 1 anything c 1 is equal to the same number which is 6 outcomes. Lastly 6 heads that is going to be 6 c 6. If I apply this, this is going to be 6C6 is going to be equal to 6C6 6 minus 6, which is 6C0. Anything C0 or anything C the same number, NCN equals NC0 is equal to 1. You have only one outcome in which you'll get all 6 as heads. So how many total outcomes do we have? We have 20, which is 3 heads, 15, 4 heads, 6, 5 heads and 1 when all 6 are heads. 35 plus 7 which is equal to 42. Is this number exceeding 50? No, this is less than 50. So answer option A is not one of our answers. Quickly summarize this entire bit in a printed form in the next slide. 3 heads will appear in 6C3 outcomes which is 20. 4 heads in 6C4 which is 6C2 that is equal to 15. 5 heads in 6C5 which is the same as 6C1. We calculated it as a 6C5 here, no issues, which is 6. And 6 heads which will appear in 6C6 or 1 way. So total number of outcomes is a summation of all of this which is equal to 42 less than 50. So answer option A is over. It's taken us this long. Some of these might be a little less time consuming but we need to figure out exactly the same way for all six possibilities. It's actually plugging in six questions and calling it one question. Is it likely to be this difficult in the real GRE? Not likely but we are using this as a way to get a handle on how to answer such questions. Let's move on to option B. The number of outcomes in which the sum of the digits that appear on the facing side is odd when a fair die is rolled thrice. 
rolling a die thrice. How many total outcomes will you end up with? 6 times 6 times 6, which is equal to 216. Of these 216 outcomes, we need to count those outcomes in which the sum of the numbers that you see is an odd number. Let's see if there is a way to figuring it out. You can't count all of them. Let's just list down the first three or four outcomes and see what we end up seeing. The first outcome is 1, 1, 1 because the least number out of the six outcomes for any role is a 1. So let's say all roles ended up being a 1. This is the least possible sum we could get. This sum is equal to 3. That is an odd number. What's the next one? If I increment one of these die, the last one by 1, that's going to be 1, 1, 2. The sum is a 4 which is equal to even. The next one would be a 1, 1, 3. This is 3 plus 2 which is 5 which is odd. Let me increment it by one more which is 1, 1, 4. This is 4 plus 2, 6 which is even. Do you see a pattern in it? Half of these rolls end up having a sum which is odd and half of these rolls end up having a sum which is even. Half of them are odd, half of them are even. I've just gone further and listed a few more of these. We had these four listed here. I've added a couple of more. Odd even, odd even, odd even. We have a total of 216 outcomes. Half of them will have a sum which is odd, which is 108 will have a sum which is odd, which definitely is greater than 50, which means choice B is one of our answers. A was not, now we have B. I'm not sure if I'm going to recall all of these as we go to C, D, E. We'll see, right. Let's look at choice C. The number of outcomes in which the two cards drawn from a pack of well-shuffled cards are both red and face cards. You need it to be red and you want it to be a face card. How many such outcomes exist is what the question is. Let's quickly get a list down of what a pack of cards comprises. It's got two colors, red and black. We are interested in red cards. So let's not even bother about it. This, These 26 is our first subset. And we need it to be face cards within that. The red cards are basically diamonds and hearts. Face cards are jack, queen and king. So it could be jack or queen or king of diamond. Jack or queen or king of hearts. So if we get these six cards, if we get two cards out of these six sub cards, this subset of six cards, then both the cards that we get will end up being both red and face cards. So we started with 52 cards with us. The subset that is of relevance to us comprises six cards. Jack, queen and king of the two suits, diamond and hearts. From these six cards, if I pick two cards, both of the cards will end up actually being red and face cards. It's a red faced card. So 6 e 2 how many outcomes will that be? 6 times 5 upon 1 into 2. This is equal to 15 outcomes. Is this greater than 50? Nah. So this is not the answer. So choice C is not one of our answers. Quickly get to this bit in a printed form before we go to the next option. Three face cards belong to diamonds, three face card belongs to hearts. So if you pick two cards out of these six cards, then the two cards will end up being red faced cards. So that's going to happen in 6C2 or 15 outcomes. Definitely C is not one of our answers. Let's move on to option D. The number of outcomes in which the vowels appear together when the letters of the word priority are reordered. How many letters are these? Four plus four. We have eight letters. Do letters repeat? Yes. R appears twice. I appears twice. So that is the breakup of this set of letters. Priority is an eight letter word. The vowels are I, O, I. We need the vowels to appear together. The consonants are these. Some of them repeat R appears twice and I also appears twice. We want the vowels to appear together. So let's do one thing. Let's keep the vowels as one single unit. I, I, O or I, O, I, whatever you call it. We'll call this unit as delta or X. I'm going to call it as an X. Let this be an X. And then we have the remaining, how many? Out of the eight, we have written three. We have five more letters, which is P, couple of R's, a T and a Y. These are all the consonants. So when you want the vowels to appear together, make the vowels as one unit. I've called this unit as a delta in the printed form. I'm calling it as an X here. It really doesn't matter what you call it. So what are we going to reorder? If you think of this X as one unit, we have an X, we have P, R, R, T, Y. That actually translates to a six letter word which comprises two R's. In how many ways can this be reordered? This is a six letter word, so six factorial. There are two R's, so divided by two factorial. Six factorial upon two factorial. This is just up till this point. We have one more job to do. We can reorder this IOI as IIO, OII. There are different ways of reordering it. But let's compute what is the value of this. Six factorial is a 720 divided by 2, this value works out to 360. There is some more to be multiplied. That multiplying, what are we going to multiply? We're going to multiply it with the number of ways in which this IOI can reorder. 
that definitely is going to be a number greater than 1 this part of the answer itself is a 360 we need to check out whether the number of outcomes exceeds 50 i'm not even going to waste time to in the examination to compute what this is i know 360 into a positive integer is going to be greater than 350 and in that number is going to be at least equal to 360 and that is greater than 50 so choice d is one of our answers don't worry i'm not going to leave you in the lurch this ioa in how many ways can it reorder it's a three letter word so it can reorder in factorial three ways obviously two of these letters are i so we're going to divide it by a two factorial so three factorial upon two factorial is a three so total number of outcomes actually works out to 1080 what i was trying to impress upon you is the moment you figure out by any one part of it itself that the total answer exceeds a 50 you don't have to waste time computing the final answer because this question is not asking you for what is the answer it is asking whether the number of outcomes in choice d exceeds 50 that we would have got it from just this part of it quickly summarize both these things in a printed form in the next slide that delta and p r r t y right delta is a unit of three letters this can reorder in 360 ways the unit which comprises an ioi can reorder in three ways so total number of outcomes is 1080 certainly choice d is one of our answer options Let's move on to E, the last but one. The number of ways of posting six different letters in two different boxes, such that at least one letter is posted in each of the boxes. Let's make life easy. Let's give names to these letters: A, B, C, D, E, F. We have the two boxes. Those boxes are one and two. Say so this is box number one. This is box number two. I pick letter A. I can put it into box one or into box two. So how many choices do I have for letter A? I have two choices for letter A. How many for letter B? Again, it can go into A, box one or box two. Two for this. Letter C again two. Letter D two. Letter E two. Letter F two. So, how many total number of ways in which can I post these six letters? Number of ways in which I can post all of these six letters into the two boxes is two raised to the power of six, which is equal to sixty-four. But hold on, this is not the answer. Sixty-four is definitely greater than fifty. Are we going to multiply something from it? No. this question states that at least one letter should go into each of the boxes in one of the outcomes i would have posted a b c d e f all of them into box 1 i thought picked a i said it goes into box 1 i picked b said that also goes into box 1 is this possible certainly yes it's a possibility similarly in one outcome all of the six letters could have gone into box 2 but this question says that if this had happened we would have posted all 6 into a and would have posted none into b in, in all 6 into 1 and none into 2 this question says that we need to post at least one letter in each of the box so this is not permitted so is thus this not permitted if i had posted all 6 into box 2 and none into box 1 that is also not permitted so two of these outcomes are not permitted because we need to post at least one letter in each of the boxes So how many total outcomes? Sixty-four. Subtract two out of it. That leaves us with sixty-two outcomes. This still is greater than fifty. So choice C is one of our answer options. Quickly run through it. We need to exclude the possibility that all six letters are posted into only one of the boxes. All six into box one or all six into box two. So sixty-four minus two. Sixty-two total outcomes for event E. So choice E is one of our answers. Let's look at the last event. The number of ways of selecting at least one Indian. and at least one american for a debate from a group comprising three indians and four americans we are not selecting one indian we are selecting at least one indian how many indians do we have we have three indians so we could select one or two or all three same goes for americans we could choose anything all the way down from one american all the way up to four americans so that's what we have written here couple of ways of getting to this i'm going to solve it one way here and in the printed form i'm going to walk you through an alternative way to arrive at this this obviously is a shorter version right see i let's say the three indians we have are a b c can a be selected yes can a be rejected yes so a has we have two options when we look at the member a he could be selected or not be selected so two outcomes possible when we look at indian a when we look at indian b we'll still have two options indian b can be selected need not be selected same goes for c So these three Indians, we have actually a total of eight options with them. Select, not select. Select, not select. Select, not select. Look at it. In one option, I'll say I'm not selecting A. I'm not selecting B. I'm not selecting C. It's like getting all three heads, right? So this is a one outcome where not even one Indian is selected. 
that obviously is not permitted because we need to select at least one Indian. So of the eight outcomes, which includes not selecting even one Indian, one of the outcomes not selecting that, not even selecting one Indian has to be subtracted. That leaves us with seven possible outcomes in which at least one Indian is selected. Run through the same logic for Americans. Let's say the Americans are P, Q, R and S. Two options for P, two for Q, two for R, two for S. We have total of two power four, which is 16 outcomes. And in one of those 16, only one of those 16, we'll say that I'm selecting neither P nor Q nor S nor R. Not even one of them is selected. That certainly is not permitted because we need to select at least one American. So you have a total of 15 ways of selecting at least one American out of the four Americans. So how many total options do we have? Selecting one Indian, at least one Indian, I'm sorry, and one American because you're combining it, concatenating it with an and. The number of outcomes should be multiplied. 7 times 15 is 105, which certainly is greater than 50. So choice F is also one of our answers. As I would mentioned, I'm going to use a different approach to compute the number of outcomes in the printed version. I'm saying at least one Indian. So it could be one Indian or two Indians or three Indians. Out of the three Indians, one Indian can be selected in three choose one or three C one ways, which is three ways. Two in three C two or three ways. 3C3, three, all three selected, which is one way. So we added it up, which works out to seven. This is what we computed as a two cube minus one. Essentially, we have subtracted the outcome of 3C0 from this total number of outcomes. Run through the same thing for Americans. 4C1, 4C2, 4C3, 4C4. Four ways, six ways, four ways, and one. Six plus four, 10, 14, 15, which is what we got as two power four minus one, which also turned out to be a 15. So it's an alternative way to arrive at this. So total number of outcomes, seven ways of selecting at least one Indian, 15 ways of selecting at least one American, adding up to 105. So choice F is one of our answer options. I don't recall which all worked out. Here's a list of all those correct answers. B, D, E, and F are the answer options where the number of outcomes exceeded 50. A and C are the ones which you should not be selecting. Before you leave, try this most comprehensive quantitative GRE course. It's available you can sign up as a trial user at wzko.in. I'll write it here, wzko.in slash quant, right? Sign up as a trial user. You don't have, a, have to give a credit card number. You can just sign up as a trial user. A couple of topics which are available free. Run through that. Experience the UI, experience the teaching methodology. If you find it useful, convert it and get access to all the topics. It covers every single topic. It's got GRE level questions. It starts from absolute basics and walks you to a level where you can score 170 on 170 in the GRE quant. Best wishes.